I am Marcus, son of my mother, and heir to the Phoenix. Batman and Spider-Man and I are bringing you guys the latest episode of Arrow. This is the first time you're catching my channel. Hit that subscribe button because I post videos every week. And I'd love to have you guys a part of the nerdy, geeky family that we have here on YouTube. If this is the first time you're catching my channel, this review is going to be full of spoilers. So if you haven't seen Arrow, come back when you have. And if you have seen it, let's jump right on in to the newest episode of Al Sahim, Warith Al Ghul. Heir to the Demon. It's not all that. I added this in case you guys asked me what the other part of his name was. Um, Hive references. I, I knew they were going to mention Damien Dark because when everybody was like, oh my god, they're going to add Damien Wayne. I'm like, no, people. Damien Dark. Silly gooses, you people. Damien Dark is what we're getting. Not Damien Wayne. Maybe Oliver's son could be like a Damien Wayne kind of character, but that's like way down the future timeline. Laurel trading and Nissa bonding. I honestly have to say that her, th those two together, I feel like Laurel's finally come into her own character, you know, and now it's like she's on par with Nissa in, in a way because she, because like L Nissa's toughening her up, Laurel's softening her up. It's like they each benefit from something from the other one. And it's really good to see them bond because I'm like, oh, I miss Sarah. I wonder if she's going to have that same Al Ghul charm and get Laurel too. That would be funny. I know it's already people shipping them, but I'm like, you already smashed the sister, so I don't think you want to keep it in the family at that point. Fighting on sacred ground. I didn't even remember that was the building Sarah was... Di oh god, I'm sad. I'm sad. I miss Sarah. Katie Lotz, darling, I miss you so damn much. But she was like, I want to die on the same ground as Sarah. I'm like, Sarah was fucking catapulted from like that tall story building down to the ground. I don't think you want to die like that, but the Canary Cry was awesome to see to finally see it in action. I can't wait for the upgrade where it comes out like Pie Piper sound thing with the gloves, and just right now it's really like Junior because she's got to learn how to use it, but we finally see it and it's awesome, and seeing her train is going to be better because then she's going to learn how to use that and her fighting skills, and then BAM! Black Canary, and I can't wait. Floating from a building. That was my favorite part of the most unrealistic thing in this whole series. It was like, oh no, we fought. Doo -doo -doo. We. Me and my grandmother both laughed at that. Like, okay. Yeah, you can just do that. Yeah, you can just, woof, just jump down. You know, you had a rope, or you learn how to fly. Arrow learn fly. HMO2. Warehouse fight. That was cool. That was a really cool fight scene. Like, everybody's doing something. You know, Lila's got the guns. Because they were like, Felicity's like, don't touch me. And I'm like, oh shit. Felicity's feisty, but that's why she's holding guns on her. Laurel's trying. She got beat up by two League of Assassins, but she did okay. I mean, they kept, like, you know, taking turns punching her, but, you know. Kudos for trying, damn it. I was hoping she'd use the cry again, but I guess I guess it has a limit of how, of how long you can use it before it has a recharge. I don't know how Cisco built it. But... Um, Thea comes to save the day, and at least Diggle knows how to use a sword better in real time than in the hallucination, because I was like, Diggle, don't pick up that sword, you're a gunman. But I was like, I'm glad he, you know, used the sword and they fought and they're trying to bring him back. I'm like, don't bring Oliver back yet. Let him be evil for a couple episodes. But like I tell, I tell you guys a lot, I like when they don't have Oliver, that way they have to step up. And it was kind of convenient that Ray wasn't there, because I think Ray would have been able to, like, do some stuff. I think he'd have been able to, like, electrocute everybody and leave them like Roy, to leave them dying on the floor. So, it's kind of good we didn't have Superman on the show to help us out. Thea comes and saves the day. That was awesome. I was really hoping for a different color costume, but that comes later. She's going to have, like, yellow and black, like Speedy. Don't worry. And I was like, yeah, in case you guys forgot, in Season 1, they showed that Thea has a bunch of archery trophies. So, she's, like, legit, like, good at it. She's not like, you know, like Merlin trained her in that. No, she's been legit good at archery since before. She did, since like she was like little, I'm assuming. And marry my daughter. Dark Hunter was telling me about this for lots of times, for a while, and I was like, nah, they're not gonna do that. Until I forgot that Ra's al Ghul is a soulless pimp who will pimp his daughter out to the anybody. 
really. Like, you know, at least Talia got some taste. She fucked a billionaire. Like, Nissa got the broke billionaire. Like, where do your priorities lie? Like, come on now. <laughs> and drop that virus on your city. That'll be fun. And be like, last season, where the Slade men took over. I, I'm kind of eager to see what happens with all of that. Like, how they actually fit it into the story about how they're going to have him do that. And then have him save the city. But tell me what you guys thought about the episode. Comment down below what kind of color costume you want Thea to wear. And whether or not you like the Canary Cry. Always remember, guys, that through good times and bad times, remember to geek out and enjoy your lives. And I'll catch you guys next week for some more Arrow and tomorrow for the comic stand.